70 years ago, Europe was in ruins following the devastation of World War II. Two years after the war ended, millions of people remained in refugee camps across the continent. The war severely disrupted Europe's agriculture industry, and a particularly harsh winter in 1946 left over 140 million people without reliable access to food. Foreign aid, from governments and private entities alike, was essential for survival, but even more support was needed for long-term recovery. World War II marked the second time in a generation that instability throughout Europe resulted in global conflict. In order to rebuild, the situation required a strategic vision and bold action to prevent Europe from collapsing into chaos yet again. June 5, 1947, 71 years ago today, a vision to stabilize Europe took shape on the steps of the Memorial Church in Harvard Yard. That the United States should do whatever it is able to do to assist in the return of normal economic health in the world, without which there can be no political stability and no assured peace. Our policy is directed not against any country or doctrine, but against hunger, poverty, desperation, and chaos. Its purpose should be the revival of a working economy in the world so as to permit the emergence of political and social conditions in which free institutions can exist. In his speech, the Secretary of State, George C. Marshall, described his theory that the robust American economy could drive recovery efforts across Europe. Secretary Marshall believed the United States could and must restore political stability in Western Europe and curb the spread of communism. Senator Arthur Vandenberg championed the concept in Congress. This ambitious feat would present new challenges to the U.S. government, so he turned to Brookings President Harold G. Moulton to ask for the institution's help. It would be helpful to have an objective study by an independent agency of the highest standard, Vandenberg wrote. The deep and universal respect which the Brookings Institution richly deserves and enjoys would make your recommendations of tremendous value. On January 22, 1948, the Brookings Institution produced a 20-page report with eight specific recommendations, many of which were included in the Economic Cooperation Act, which passed Congress with bipartisan support in March 1948. The resulting Marshall Plan, as it commonly is known, would go on to bolster recovery efforts in Europe by modernizing Europe's economy through American technical assistance, fostering private sector growth, and with loans to import re reconstruction materials. At home, the plan's success swayed American public opinion of foreign assistance. We'll cross the bread, and that way we can help build up those starved bodies. We can tide those kids over until the battlefields become grain fields again. You're right, Bill. If we send food to those starved children, we'll be helping in the greatest struggle of all, the struggle for lasting peace. Overseas, it fostered the principles of self-reliance, regional cooperation, and technical training all fundamental aspects of modern foreign aid. These values ingrained a sense of stewardship as Europe's economies recovered. New partners emerged that today work closely with the United States to advance stability and prosperity around the world. The United States traces its international development heritage back to the Marshall Plan. Seventy years later, we continue to aspire to help partner countries advance on their development journeys and, just as post-war European countries did, move from recipients to partners to donors. Thank you.